What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Um, just some gameplay today and me playing in the new formation. I think we start the day off 17 and 2, I believe. Um, I ended up finishing, spoilers if you don't want to hear it, just mute for like 10 seconds. I ended up finishing 25 and 5, uh, obviously very, very happy with that. Um, lots of things changed over the last day or so. We're going to talk about it a little bit. I've got a lot of comments and they all lead into the discussion topics that I want to go through. Uh, the first one is from Tom Turner and Tom says, I think it would be good to see you an attempt to do the best you can in champs to see how your game is developed throughout the year. Love the content, by the way. And uh, this weekend, I ended up do, like just doing like my equal best, right? I've got 25 wins four times before this 25 wins. Um... There was one weekend where I was 25 and 4. I was leading 3 0 in the game to get my 26th win. And I ended up, like, I was streaming it at the time. And people were like, look, just give the guy the win. Like, so, like, we was talking about it. So I ended up giving the guy the win. So I, I would have won that game as well. Like, I know I would have done. Like, I just know I would have done. Um, but my, my, you know, my official confirmed result, my best results is 25 wins. This weekend was a bit of a weird one because by the time I got to 17 and 2, Although that is an insane record, I was still a little bit frustrated with how the games that I lost had gone. I lost them both on penalties at that point. And I actually went all the way up from 17-2 and two to 21-2. and two. And I sit there and think to myself, man, the fact that I've won from 17-2 and two to 21-2, and two, that's four wins in a row at plus 15 form. Which means if those wins... Um, if those losses on penalties had been wins, I still would have potentially, realistically, been around 23-0, and 0, you know, because I'm playing at max form, matchmaking doesn't change for me at that point, right? Um, and I sit there and think, man, 23-0, and 0, that would be amazing. And this weekend league, even though I lost five games, I lost two on penalties, one to a good player um, that I just still felt a little bit unjustly losing to, one to a guy that I pretty much should have beaten. I lost two games before the very final game again one of them was to a good player it, it was a bit unfortunate how i conceded the goal that started the loss off you'll see it in today's video but he was a good player and then another one of them was to a guy that i just shouldn't have lost to um and that makes me feel like i'm i'm, I'm on the verge of hitting 27 plus wins and i just just need to get a little bit more consistent but the way i started playing games this weekend like i say i was 17 and 2 after streaming uh, we streamed on Sunday afternoon to 17 and 2. And then I was like, I wasn't, I was literally just going to finish there. I was going to spend some time with my partner. Um, I was going to just watch a movie with her. I was like, look, I'm happy with goal two because like my elite three rewards for um, Premier League was just embarrassing. Like I, I was, I was just so disengaged with the game that I didn't really want to play anymore. And then I started rendering out my road to glory uh, for last night. And during the time that it was rendering, I played one more because I was like, I literally had nothing to do whilst I was waiting for it to render. So I was like, let me just play a game and see what happens. And I got a rage quit. So I was like, let me just play another game. Well, not necessarily a rage quit, but I got a win. And then I think I got a rage quit. So before I knew it, I was 19 and 2. And so I did go and spend some time with my partner. She ended up going to bed quite early. She's like obviously still out like only two weeks after a major operation. So she's still, uh, the anesthesia is still in her body and her system. Uh, you know, she's a mother of two kids. She's working hard on that that regard. So she was she was tired. She went to bed. And so I was like, look, let me just play to gold uh, and, and we'll go from there. So I got to 20 wins, 20 and 2. And uh, I was just playing great FIFA. And I was like, man, what I wanted, like, I was so close to elite. I was like, look, I've, I've got 20 wins and two losses. And I tweeted out, motivate me and showed the picture. And people were just like, dude, you can't, you look at the chance you got. Maybe you never have this chance again to get, top 100 or to get elite one because uh, 28 wins might have got me into top 100 if my skill rating was high enough i'm not entirely sure uh, this game right here by the way guys this is the fortuna sitard pro player uh so i was really happy to to you know do so well against him he, he signed to their esports team uh he was a good player as well i just i managed to uh, i think his head went after about 3-1 because it, it got easier and easier as, as the game went on um but yeah i went to 21 what well, basically won the game for 21 and 2 and uh, at that point, I'm like, look, I've, I've, I've just got to. I've got to play to Elite now. I can't not play to Elite. And I didn't want to stream it because I would have put pressure on myself uh, if I streamed it. And so I went from 21 and 2 and then ended up losing 21 and 3. I then ended up winning um, 22 and 3, 23 and 3. 
And so at 23 and 3 with four games left, although top 100 is out of the way at this point, I have a chance for Elite 1. I'm thinking four wins. I've won so many games at 15 form. I know I'm good enough to win at 15 form consistently now. I'm winning way more than I'm losing. Uh, let's give it a shot. And so um, I, I was actually 23 and 4. Uh, maybe actually the game before. No, I, was, I got to 22 and 4, I beg your pardon. Um, and again, I felt like I was robbed. I just felt like I was robbed of a game because of the way this game is. Um, and I actually lost that game, I think, 8-2 in the end because my head went. Uh, like, you'll see you'll see just the, the end of the game. It was a game where I was like, I was dominating. He scored a goal with Messi, a near post header with Messi. Whilst Varane and my keeper were sandwiching Messi, he still managed to get the head in and on goal. And you will see the score lines. And then I equalised. And then he scored from kickoff. Then I scored from kickoff. Then he scored from kickoff. Um, and so we had four goals in four minutes. And it's just diabolical. Um, and I was just so triggered. And then he scored five minutes into the second half. And at 4-2 down, I'm like, okay, I'm just, I just got frustrated. I started playing bad. I started like getting frustrated. And, and it was the first time this weekend league. No, sorry. The second time this weekend league that I got. Look at that. That's, that's the goal. This guy was a good player. That's the goal that set this game off. He fouls Virgil van Dijk. I then tackle him twice with Varane and he still gets the ball back. And it, it was frustrating because I only lost this game 3-2 in the end. And uh, I just think to myself, like, if that if that never resulted in a goal, I might have won this game. But, it, it does, you know, it doesn't make any difference. We didn't win the game. We, we I'm still got, I've still got to be happy with my 25-2. and two. But in terms of, like, what Tom Turner's comment is about how, how to improve and stuff, I'm definitely adding a few elements to my game. Switching into the 4 triple 2 has been really, really instrumental in me finding it more comfortable to beat good players. A lot of the times when I play against good players, I struggle a little bit. You know, I, I, I get stressed. I start making mistakes. Like, they get the better of me. And I feel like at this point in time, unless I come up against like a full-on top-tier pro player, I feel like I'm in, in with a chance of winning every game. But after losing the game 8-2... Uh, that was only the second time this weekend league where I was just super triggered at the game. The, you know, one of the penalty losses as well, I was super triggered at the game. And it's actually a good thing for me, which is really hard, really interesting. But it, it's a good thing for me that I only got very triggered at this game two times out of 30 games whilst playing up to 25 wins. I'm very happy with that. And it made me just believe in myself a lot more after this weekend league because of how comfortably... I went to 25 wins without even really trying. You know, I was 17 and 2, then I just played up to 20 and 2. Before I knew it, I was 23 and 4, and I had three games left. And I ended up winning the first one very easily on stream, winning the second one very easily on stream. And then the final game that would have got me the 26th win, I ended up losing to a guy who was abusing constant pressure, which has an issue with passing, but it's so hard to prove. Uh, but. I, I wish, it, like, when I talked to the EA guy about it, he, he was just like, oh, maybe you're just making worse decisions and maybe, um, you know, maybe uh, maybe that your opponent's, like, put, like covering your passing lane so it's harder. But I, I don't believe that to be true. What happens when constant pressure is applied is, in my opinion, the game believes that because you're under pressure, because of constant pressure that you're prone to making more mistakes, even if you have high composure. And so simple passes, whilst you're actually not physically under pressure, go waywards. Um, and, it, and in that game, it was just a game where I lost it 2-1 in the end, but it was a game where I was just like, look, this, I, I, I obliterated this guy. He, he was on constant pressure, all out attack, 3-5-2. So he only ever had two or three defenders at all times. And every time I would counter him with a 5-on-2 or a 5-on-3 counter attack or a 4-on-2 or a 4-on-3 counter attack, Every time I tried to make the obvious pass whilst under no pressure, it would go nowhere near where I was playing. And it was, it was, quite, it was quite annoying. Um, but in terms of this is the game that I lost 8-2 here. And I just want to show you the end where the goals are scored. I mean, in terms of the actual game itself, his keeper made eight saves. My keeper made just five. He beat me 8-2. Match stats. He had a lot more possession. But look at that. 41, 42, 43 and 45. Kickoff goals don't exist though, guys. So I'm glad we got that covered. But yeah, I'm, I'm, after today, after this week's run and the fact that we got 24 wins last week in what was the most difficult weekend league I think we're ever going to experience because of the Premier League uh, team of the season, to get 25 wins this week and, and in, in that 25 wins, only really coming up against two people who were very good players that kind of deserve to win, 
it makes me think I can get 27 or 28 wins every week if if on those three games that I lost where I feel like I should have won, if I could just figure out what the difference is to make those into wins. And the way that I'm going to be able to figure out to make those into wins is continuing with the four triple two and continuing to add the dynamic attacking options that I have with the first time time shots. And you see them throughout today's video. I still score a lot of headers and a lot of crosses, but my gameplay is adapted way more. For example, this game, this goal right here, the pass into Ronaldo, I would never have been able to do that if I was still in a 4-2-3-1 because the striker wouldn't be there. So I'm playing Ronaldo at left striker. If I was still in the 4-1, in the 4-2-3-1, Henri would be up front and the cam would be central. So I'd have two central players. But because the strikers switch around and I've got a left striker and a right striker, they now come in to the angles to be able to do that. Um, and so with that in mind, it's, it's just added a, an element of me being able to get more goals, which is obviously really, really nice. Uh, the Triple Whammy says, I wonder where this account would be if it stayed first owner. I don't think it would be too far different. Uh, Allison and Trent, I would still have. I wouldn't have Virgil van Dijk, but I would have completed player of the year Virgil van Dijk, so I would still have Virgil van Dijk. Uh, Alonso and Varane are already first owner. Kante and Vieira are already first owner. Um, Bale, Henri are already first owner. Uh, who else we've got? Aubameyang I bought. So it, it's Aubameyang and Ronaldo are the only two players in the team that aren't first owner. But I would have likely completed another icon or two. I, prob I would have likely done like maybe Cliver or um, maybe Ronaldinho or Ronaldo or Hullet already. Like we would have probably gone into more icon heavy uh, road to glory at this stage if I hadn't, you know, moved away from it. But I don't think the team would be too dissimilar. And there is another first time time goal from Cristiano Ronaldo. And just what a finish. And, and they, they are as absolutely broken as crossing the ball. They're so overpowered. They're so strong as a shot type. It's, it's just stupid. It really is. Uh, the next comment is from uh, James. It says, how do you know if an SBC is good value for money? And I thought this was actually a really good question. Because I always talk about oh, this, this SBC is not good value or this SBC is good value or this SBC is a really good card, but it's also quite expensive and, and things like that. And I think to, to determine whether or not an SBC is good value relies on a whole bunch of different factors, um, which are a lot deeper than just black and white, is it good value, yes or no. It, it depends on how good you are at FIFA, how much time you have to put into FIFA, how many coins you currently have, what your current team looks like. Uh, what your play style is. So, for example, Leon Goretzka, right? 600,000 coins or so to complete him. Uh, he is a top, top tier end game card. And I, I asked you guys in the last video, should I do him or not? Some people said yes, some people said no. I think I've come to the conclusion that I'm not going to do him just because he just wouldn't fit into my team. So, for me, on this account, it's not a good value SBC because it would be a 600,000 coin uh, deficit, whether that's through cards or coins, but 600,000 coin deficit for a player that would sit on my bench. I already have enough players sitting on my bench. I don't need more of them. And he's untradeable. So it's not like I could, if, you know, if he was a tradable card and I bought him and then I lost 100k but could sell him, I could still get coins back. And so for me, it's not a good value SBC. But for somebody else that might have been building towards a Bundesliga team the whole year, maybe they've got player of the month Havertz, maybe they've got player of the month Marco Royce, uh, player of the month Jaden Sancho or FFS Sancho. Maybe they got the Jonathan Tarr special card uh, and now the new SBC of Jonathan Tarr. Maybe they've got the Boateng flashback card, um, the Goetzer flashback card. Maybe they got the Fuck Birthday Alaba in their team. You know, just a good Bundesliga team. This card for them, I would say, might be insane value for money. Again, depending on how much coins they have, how good they're at FIFA and, and uh, how much time they have to put into the game. If you're not great at FIFA and you have not a lot of time to put into the game, um, I would say don't do that SBC because that's 600,000 coins that would be far better spent just buying some team of the seasons and improving your squad for the small amount of time that you play the game. Also, if you don't have many coins, um, I, would, I would be reluctant to play um to, to complete that card because you want to stay as liquid as possible to be able to continue to grind SBCs and then to find an SBC sorry league SBCs and then to be able to actually find an SBC where it's like oh this is a really good value SBC I'm gonna do it um so it really it really is just circumstantial each to the player and so, some SBCs for me I look at and I just think oh I can't even get close to touching him for example the David Vera SBC we didn't do him on this account on the road to glory 
because he was like 300,000 coins if memory serves. And uh, I had just an abundance of quality strikers. I didn't need another striker. Um, but a lot of people did him and had a lot of fun with him. And he was a massive upgrade to the striker that they already had. And he was a big improvement for their squad. So yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting question um, that has no real answer. No, no just immediate, oh, this is how or this is how. It really just does depend on what you have and where you are in your account. So you can see there, guys, 25 wins on the weekend. I'm really happy with 25 wins. And I'm also frustrated at the games that are lost, which makes me even happier because it, it really does make me think that, hey, I have the chance to get 28, 29 wins one week this, this year. Eventually, I'm going to either get lucky in matchmaking or I'm going to play consistent throughout the 30 games or I'm going to find that little thing that just edges me in those games and I'm eventually going to get it. Uh, Hamza says, uh, Hey, Nep, if you do not enjoy Ronaldo much, you can sell him. Get Team of the Year Mbappe. Play him at striker on the same chem as Ronaldo now. In my opinion, he's a much better player. Loving the content. Keep the amazing work. So initially, I wasn't overly keen on Ronaldo. Team of the Year or one to watch. After playing through the full 30 games with Cristiano Ronaldo, let me tell you, man, he is a different breed. Aubameyang, for me, is the best player in my team right now. 100%. I don't know if I've ever played with a card as overpowered as Aubameyang. His pace, his power, his height, just the way he feels in game. He is just an animal in game. He jumps so high, like higher than Gareth Bale did. He just jumps so high. And he scores. He's more accurate with his headers, which is really surprising because Gareth Bale scored a lot, but Aubameyang scores more. Um... Ronaldo isn't quite as good as Aubameyang in my opinion, but after playing this full 30, he is a game changer for me. He did, he was now that I've kind of got used to him and playing with him and his new work rates and etc cetera, etc, cetera, having CR7 in this team was massively instrumental to me getting up to 25 wins comfortably. It wasn't a stressful weekend for me to get to 25 wins and that's unreal. This though guys is going to be the end of the video for today. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rate, and comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.